So I'm just getting ready for work and I thought, ah, I know what I could do, a quick review on the, uh, the Specialized Flux Elite Light which I just bought. Uh, I'll run a, uh, a USC Exposure Max D light for the best part of like three, four years now. Really good light, but it's an off-road light, and as I tend to use my lights more on the road these days, um, I thought I'd get something a bit more specific. This is the uh, Specialized Flux Elite. It's a really nice little unit. All of this is um, uh, in one either battery or inside this, this actual unit. What makes it so special is it actually got reflectors. Now a lot of LED lights just rely on the bulb itself, the actual LED itself, to give you the brightness. Uh, these actually have reflectors, so the light is guided a lot better. Uh, so on the road, you, can, you get a beam more like a car, so you get a lot wider spread, and you also get a high and low beam. And what Specializer provided is this uh, pretty funky remote that basically plugs into the into your your, um, your light at the side there. It's not a little plug hole there, and um, you have a, a, a remote at the side, so you can. Raise your beam and lower it, and you can put it onto flash and so on. You don't have to reach down and fiddle around, which is quite handy when you you ride about in the night. This is the bracket; it's aluminium. It mounts on the handlebars. And the one thing that made me go for, go for this light over others is because on a road bike you've only got a certain space, a certain amount of space to um, to mount stuff. Especially if you've got a Garmin up at the, at the front, um, lights can get in the way. The beauty of this is it's going to sit on the bars, and you can have it underneath or above. But I'm going to have it underneath, underneath the Garmin. And the head of my, my cable, so it won't get messed up from the cables. It mounts like so. Basically, that just slides in like so. That sits in place. And uh, obviously, when it's just clamped up nice and tight, so that sits on there like so. And to release, you've got a little button on the side here. So press that, and then it pulls out. Like so, but I'll do with one end. But um, I'm going to mount it on my bike, and I'll show you it looks like. So this is my bike. So you see on the handlebar, you haven't got much space to, to mount a light. Especially look down here at the cables as well, so everything kind of gets in the way. So what I'm having to do is mount the light on here, have the light under here, and head of my here, uh, underneath my Garmin. Let's see how it goes. So the bracket itself comes in two pieces. It's held together with these two Allen key bolts, or cap head socket screw to give it the correct name. So let's undo these. That splits in half. We've got these really nice little uh, rubber. Um, inserts that have kind of like cogs, I guess, on them that maybe sit into these grooves, stop them rotating. And it's going two sides one for 31A, one for 25.4, so fits all handlebars. And that's going to mount on, onto there, like that. Okay, so it's a bit fitted to do this with two hands, so I'm just going to put a camera down in there and mount this. There you go, it's pretty painless. The mounts in there, obviously my cables are catching on the side a little bit. But I can move them around where I want them. Uh, and there's just the, the light as well for height. And get it set up. But it's a pretty neat little system. Nice and out of the way. You can see from the side of the light, you've got a little light here, which is pretty cool. So you can get a bit of a side light. This is a, a pulse setting it does. Right now, that does uh, flash. That's your main beam. And you have a dip. So basically, that button on the uh, the light itself cycles through all the settings, and then the button you attach to it goes in the handlebars. That can obviously um, you can program to use either the high beam and low beam, or flashing, or whatever you want really. So. I'll give it a go in the night and see how it goes. So this is what it's like when you turn the light on, so completely dark as you can already see. That flashing light is my helmet light, it's reflecting in my, my, my Garmin. So there you go, that's turned on. That's the kind of, kind of light you get from it. So it's quite, quite good. It's actually not showing up particularly well on the camera, but uh, it's actually really widespread like over here. It's illuminating that. See darkness there. Um, that's the dip. That's the high beam. Let's take it onto the road. Hopefully, no cars can run me down. So, that's your dip. And the high beam. Doesn't look much here on this lens, but um, believe me, it's, it's a lot brighter than my USC exposure, um, which is the Max D Mark III one. It's 1200 lumens, it's the same power, but this. 
other than the reflectors, just give you a lot better light. Um, so you can press the press this button here, the headlight button. You get a kind of dip and high beam. It doesn't look great particularly. A lot of flashes when you press the button too quickly. So you got to hold the button down like, like a firm press. And you press the uh, specialized S button next to the headlight button. It takes you to the lower setting. Again, you got the high beam and low beam. And press it again. You get this crazy kind of spooky um, like, like a slow strobe. And press it again. You get your strobe, your classic strobe. And again, if you press the headlight button, you get a high beam. Press again, you get a low beam. So it's pretty cool. And then you go back to your main main setting. So yeah, I'm really impressed with this light. Let's say it doesn't really do it much justice um, on this camera. You see my handbars there. I'd say you got a good 200 yards, I reckon, of light. Maybe 150 yards. I don't know what the eyes and meters. I'll work it out and put put it in the description below. But yeah. Um, it's also got some pretty cool lights on the side, just there, so you've got some side lights as well, which is pretty funky. I like the display, it's lit up. And the downside, the button is a bit, a bit wanky, it moves around quite a bit. And the, uh, the headlight as well, actually, you can see that, it moves up and down. It's got a really nice fixing that allows the, uh, the light to slide on with the button using two bearings. But the downside to that is the, um, the bearings are sitting tight enough so you get a bit of rattle when, you, when you're riding along. Oh, another great light. Okay, so I'm back. I thought I'd just do a quick recap of the light as um, it's a bit easier to film in here and uh, it's a lot clearer. So you can see on the side it's got like a USB port, it's a micro USB port. That's where you charge and also where you plug in the, uh, the cable that's attached to the to the, uh, the button. It's a real nice little button, but the downside is I'm about to, it's, it's not a rubber band down here. And then uh, I guess you've got like a a mountain bike grip, you rest that on there, on the edge, but I haven't, so I rest it on the actual clamp to give it a bit of stability. But off that, it moves around quite a bit, and it's a bit, it's a bit of a crap design to fill. I think they could have done a better job of that. They said they, they like rattles, so you lose a bit of, bit of play. Basically, like a bracket, I'm trying to zoom in, bracket there. Um, it's on like a it's basically a tube, you press a button, and it releases these, these ball bearings which sit. Sit in here, just in there, and obviously there's a bit, there's a bit of free play, so it allows you to rattle. It doesn't bother me, so I ride with my headphones in, and I've got mud guards on the bike as well, so it's quite a noisy bike anyway. But as far as lights go, really impressed with this. You can see it's got the um, the reflectors at the back there, which gives it the the better beam. But all in all, it's a really good light. If you use it for road use, definitely, definitely worth a purchase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, pardon.